section. <laughs> okay, now on this section, try to look a little more sexy. Yeah. Sexy and ethics don't go together. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, go ahead. Oh. I was recording the whole time. Oh, crap. Section 4, Responsibilities of a Registrant, Equal and Fair Treatment, Rule 94.71. Learning Objectives. At the end of this section, set students should be able to state two stores... <laughs> State two sources of standards that a registrant must follow in providing appraisal, assessment, or collection services. State that a registrant may not accept or solicit a benefit in return for favorable treatment. State that a registrant must not knowingly give false testimony or withhold information in any investigation or proceeding. State that a registrant must not knowingly mislead a member of the public if the member makes a reasonable inquiry about tax matters. State that a registrant may not predetermine a value or value range and then manipulate data to support it. State the sources of guidance that a registrant must follow when calculating an effective or rollback rate or similar rate or ratio. State, that, state the principle that a registrant cannot provide information to private parties selectively. Scenario 3, what would you do? Suppose you're the chief appraiser of an appraisal district. The county judge calls you personally to complain that their property value is too high. Your appraisal district has hundreds of protests. If you go out of your way to give the judge special treatment, how will the other protesters feel about that? How would you handle the judge's request? Tell them to get in line. Scenario four, what would you do? Here is a different scenario you may encounter. Let's say you're involved in something that is not very popular. Say you're the person responsible for deciding which taxpayers to sue first in a new campaign to crack down on delinquent taxpayers. The first taxpayer you sue comes in to complain that it's not fair to sue him when you have not filed suit against every delinquent taxpayer. How would you handle that? fair and equal treatment. Because public servants are expected to act for the benefit of all the public, they should never act in a way that intentionally favors or penalizes the, an individual or one group over another. The Texas Constitution requires taxation to be equal and uniform. The TDLR rules and the Texas Penal Code both speak to acting in a uniform manner. Chief appraisers and employees of appraisal districts should be particularly sensitive to one potential source of unequal treatment, political pressure. Jurisdictions may pressure the appraisal district to increase values or to keep them stable when in fact they decline. Property owners unhappy with decisions on exemptions may complain to elected officials who may demand action without necessarily being familiar with the laws the chief appraiser must enforce. Appraisal districts were created to ensure that the decisions relating to appraisal exemption qualification, special appraiser, appraisal, and the many other areas in the, pro in the purview of the appraisal district are made fairly and not on the basis of political pressure. Relevant rules. TDLR 94, um, 94.71A a registrant must equally must apply equally and fairly any appraisal, assessment, or consulting service according to the uniform standards of the professional appraisal practice and generally accepted appraisal, assessment, or collection practices applicable to an assignment. Elements. In providing a service or an assignment in performing official acts related to appraisal, assessment, or consulting, the registrant must comply with two sources of standards. The Uniform Standards of Professional Appraisal Practice, which are a set of standards related to appraisal published by the Appraisal Foundation. The standards have a number of parts, including an ethics rule. The ethics rule sets forth the requirements for integrity, impartiality, objectivity, independent judgment, and ethical conduct that an appraiser must follow when performing appraisals or related services. The USPAP ethics rule is quite detailed but includes requirements to perform ethically and competently, avoid criminal conduct, perform impartiality and objectively, refrain from acting as an advocate, 
refrain from assignments that involve predetermined results, refrain from communicating an appraisal in a misleading or fraudulent manner or allowing an employee to do so, disclose fees or things of value paid in procurement of an assignment, refrain from accepting assignments where compensation is contingent on reporting a particular result, furthering the cause of the client, the amount of the value opinion, the achievement of the stipulated result or the occurrence of subsequent event related to the appraiser's opinion and specific to the assignment's purpose. Refrain from advertising or soliciting assignments in a false or misleading manner. Maintain confidentiality of client information and prepare and retain appropriate records, work files to back up work done for at least five years after preparation or two years after judicial testimony. Generally accepted appraisal assessment or collection practices. These would uh, include practices that are generally recognized and used in our profession, such as use of three approaches to value in appraisal. TDLR 94.71b, a registrant may not accept or solicit any benefit in return for favorable treatment elements. This is bribery and is also prohibited by the Texas Penal Code. A benefit is defined in the Texas Penal Code as anything of pecuniary. pecuniary or monetary value. If you accept or ask for any type of benefit on the basis that you will provide some favorable treatment in your official position, you violate both this rule and the Texas Penal Code. TDLR Rule 94.71c, a registrant must not knowingly testify falsely or withhold any information or influence anyone into testifying falsely or withholding any information in any investigation or proceeding. Elements. A registrant has an obligation to be honest in official proceedings. A registrant has the obligation to not tamper with witnesses. Tax professionals participate in many different types of investigations and proceedings, including protest hearings, delinquent tax suits, and other types of proceedings. They may be involved in a TDLR investigation or proceeding. Registrants must not knowingly lie when giving testimony. They must not knowingly withhold information. They must not influence anyone else to testify falsely or withhold information in any investigation or proceeding. Testify implies that you are speaking under oath. False testimony can be perjury under the Texas Penal Code. Influencing someone else to give false testimony may be considered to be witness tampering under the Texas Penal Code. Knowingly withholding information is not necessarily a violation of the Texas Penal Code unless other facts are present. TDLR Rule 94.71D a registrant must not knowingly mislead any member of the public who makes a reasonable inquiry or request on tax matters. Elements. Registrants have an obligation to be honest in answering reasonable inquiries or requests about tax matters. You must not knowingly mislead someone who makes a request. TDLR Rule 94.71E a registrant must not predetermine the value or value range of a property or properties and then manipulate data to arrive at a predetermined conclusion. Elements. Registrants may not predetermine a value or value range for properties and then manipulate data to arrive at a predetermined conclusion. As a registered professional, you are expected to approach an assignment by following all of the steps appropriate to the assignment. In a valuation, ah, oh, I hit the wrong button. Uh, sorry, I hit the wrong button. I don't know where I'm supposed to be. Um, as a registered professional, you are expected to pro approach an assignment by following all of the steps appropriate to the assignment. In a valuation assignment that always involves analyzing the data, applying appropriate appraisal methods and techniques, and then arriving at a conclusion on the basis of your analysis. The prohibited circumstance described in this rule is the reverse. 
you start with a number in mind and then and then manipulate the data to support your predetermined number. TDLR Rule 94.71F, a registrant must not perform calculations by methods other than those directed by law, rule, or written guidance of the Comptroller of Public Accounts or that are designed to result in a predetermined effective tax rate or rollback tax rate, current or delinquent collection rate or other value rate, or ratio used for official purposes. Elements. Just as an appraiser must follow appropriate appraisal steps and procedures, a registrant who performs tax calculations must follow appropriate steps and laws. When the registrant performs calculations such as the calculation of an effective tax rate, a calculation for a report to the state or the calculation of an individual tax, the registrant must be familiar with and follow the law that applies. In addition, if the Comptroller's Office has provided a rule or written guidance for the calculation, the registrant must follow that as well. As in paragraph E, a registrant must not predetermine an effective tax rate, rollback tax rate, current or delinquent tax rate, or any other value, rate, or ratio, and then use calculations designed to result in the manipulated number. TDLR Rule 94 94.71G, a registrant must not provide to any private party information that is not provided to or reasonably available to all persons. Elements. In general, a registrant may not be selective in providing information. The registrant must not provide information to a private party, someone not part of the government, if the information is not provided to or reasonably available to all persons. Governmental officials have the duty to abide by laws concerning how to handle official information. These laws may require a registrant to provide information to certain people, even if it is not available to all people. For example, an appraisal district may be required to provide confidential sales information to someone who files a protest. You should be familiar with and, and, and careful in following your office procedures for providing information to the public. If you are responsible for administrating your office's information program, you must be familiar with the Public Information Act and related tax code provisions.